Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be multiplying two numbers that are raised to powers. So we have 2 plus i to the 8th power and 2 minus i to the 7th power and we're going to multiply these two things. So I'll be presenting a couple different methods. The first one will be a little painful, which is something you would normally not follow. But I still want to talk about it. First of all, notice that the powers are different, or you can say the exponents are different, 8 and 7. But they are pretty close. So we could hopefully use that. First of all, think about 2 plus i. Is 2 plus i a special number? And the answer is no. 1 plus i would be special because if you think about it, you can take 1 plus i to the second power and then you'll get 2i. And then if you go ahead and raise it to the fourth power, you should be getting 4i squared, which is negative 4, which is cool, right? Because this number can be written in polar form and it's going to have some special angles. When you raise them to powers, you're going to get other special angles, which makes this very special. But the same thing doesn't happen with 2 plus i, does it? Well, it kind of does, it kind of doesn't. Because you can think of this number as 1 plus 1 plus i, and there's something interesting about 1 plus z, but the problem with that is you may have something like 1 plus e to the power i theta, but here we do have an r modulus, which is kind of going to mess up things a little bit. Anyways, that's a different story. Let's not get into the depth, but let's go ahead and try to focus on 2 plus i here. So one of the things that I can do is just use the binomial theorem to raise this number to the 8th power. And 7th power should be similar, right? Well, binomial theorem is going to give you 9 terms, so good luck with that, right? So let's take a look. I can go ahead and take this to the 8th power and then use the formula. Remember, the formula goes like this. h choose 0, 2 to the 8th power, and then you'll have h choose 1, 2 to the 7th, and then you'll introduce the i and then a choose 2, 2 to the 6, but then you'll have a higher power of i, and they'll just switch around, right? Until you hit a choose 8, which is 1, times i to the 8th power. A lot of these powers of i can be easily evaluated. For example, i squared is negative 1, i cubed is negative i, i to the 4th is 1, i to the 8th is 1, so on and so forth. But then at the end, you kind of have to combine like terms, and that's going to be a lot of work. But it can still be done. Or you can take a shortcut and just raise this number to the second power first because 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. So I can just go ahead and square this number first. That's going to give me 4 plus i squared plus 4i. i squared is negative 1, so this is going to be a 3 plus 4i. And then you can go ahead and kind of write this as 2 plus i to the fourth power, and that will be 2 plus i squared squared but i already know that 2 plus i squared is 3 plus 4i and then if you square it one more time you're going to get the fourth power and that's going to give you 9 plus 24i plus 16i squared which can be written as negative 16. so this will, will give you negative 7 and then negative 7 plus 24i by the way let me tell you something starting with the 3 plus 4i the real and imaginary parts actually make up nice Pythagorean triples, because think about it, 3, 4, 5. And then what happens to the next one? 7, 24, 25. You can also think of it this way. The modulus of this number is 5, so the modulus of its square is going to be its modulus squared, which is 5 squared, which is 25. Which means if you raise, square this again, its modulus is going to be 625. Or if you cube this number, then it's going to be 5 to the third power. Make sense? Okay, so how do you get 2 plus i to the 8th power from here then? Well, easy. You just need to take 4th power and square it, right? That's all you have to do. But what is 2 plus i to the 4th power? We know it, right? It is negative 7 plus 24i. Now let's go ahead and square this one more time and to get the 8th power. Now this is going to be negative 7 squared, which is going to be 49. And then minus, if you multiply 7 times 24, Let's see, it's going to be, I think, 168, but with the negative sign, and we're going to double it, 336i. And then 24i squared is going to be 576i squared, which is minus 576. 
and that will be one of the numbers. And of course, if you go ahead and subtract it, 576 minus 49 is going to be 527, but that's negative, right? And then minus 336i. And then you can just pretty much do the same thing and then put it together, right? Well, we didn't go through the seventh power, so how do we find the seventh power? You could probably use the fourth and the third powers to get that. But here's the thing. Is there a relationship between the 2 plus i to the eighth and 2 minus i to the eighth? So if I know 2 plus i to the eighth, can I find 2 minus i to the eighth the same way? Well, if you think about the binomial theorem, that should be true, right? If 2 plus i to the eighth power is like x plus yi, then this should be x minus y, don't you think? Yeah, from binomial theorem, that should be the case because real and imaginary parts are nicely separated, aren't they? Anyways, so this could help. And let me tell you real quick before I go on with the second method, uh, how this could help. Well, I I'm supposed to find 2 minus i to the seventh power, not eighth. But guess what? If you can find this and then divide by 2 minus i, you're going to get 2 minus i to the seventh power, which might be faster than going to the seventh power with the binomial theorem or going through different powers like 4 and 3. Make sense? Okay, so hopefully that'll help. At least it gave you some ideas. And now let's go ahead and talk about the real cool method, which is the second method. Okay, cool. Now, what do we have? We have 2 plus i to the 8th power multiplied by 2 minus i to the 7th power. Of course, doing them separately is a lot of work. It's brute force, and it's not really smart. So let's go ahead and do this. Even though the powers are not the same, I said they're pretty close. So why not do this? Separate one of the two plus i's and write this as 2 plus i to the 7th times 2 minus i to the 7th. And then multiply the product by 2 plus i and you'll be good to go, right? Now look at the brackets. Inside the brackets, I have the same powers. Therefore, I can just combine them, right? Using the power rule a to the n, b to the n which also works with complex numbers, a times b to the nth power. So I can go ahead and combine the bases or multiply them. In other words, multiply 2 plus i and 2 minus i, and then raise the product to the seventh power, and don't forget to multiply by 2 plus i, the leftover. Now, when you multiply a complex number by its conjugate, remember, when you multiply two complex conjugates, you do get a real number, and it's always the sum of two squares. Remember that? It's 4 plus 1, which is 5. So this is going to give you 5 to the 7th power multiply by 2 plus i. And then if you go ahead and multiply this, and what is 5 to the 7th power? That should be a large number, don't you think? Well, 5 to the 7th power is basically 5 to the 3rd squared times 5. What is 5 to the 3rd? It's 125. You could also do this. 5 to the 3rd is 125. 5 to the 4th would be 625. 5 to the 5 would be 3,125. Uh, 3, 5 to the 6th power is just going to be 15,625. And finally, 5 to the 7th power is going to be uh, something like 78,325 or something. I, I didn't evaluate it, but you can easily multiply by 5. Anyways, that's a very large number. I could probably leave it as is and just write the answer as... 2 times 5 to the 7th power plus 5 to the 7th power i, and that will be our answer. Okay? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care, and bye-bye.